Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca and today I'm going to be checking out some of the new really exciting features in Clip Studio Paint. I am a huge fan of Clip Studio Paint, it's the main drawing software I've used for years. And I'm super excited to say that they are the sponsor of this video. And because of this, they gave me early access to the new 4.0 version of Clip Studio Paint so that I could check out some of the really cool and exciting new features. But don't worry, the 4.0 version is out now, so you can check it out for yourself right after this video if you want to. Anyways, let's jump on over to my iPad. The first features we're going to look at are related to filters. I love to use filters in my work. They can really take a drawing from okay to wow. Here's two new filters added in version 4.0. First we have lens blur. Now to be honest, when I first heard of this filter my thought was, but don't we already have Gaussian blur? And yes we do, and here's what it looks like. It kind of just takes all your elements and makes them all blurry. In this case I blurred the background. However with lens blur, as we can see, there are more options. I didn't totally know what all these settings did yet, so I tried setting them to a stronger strength and checking the preview box so we can see what the filter does. And it does blur the elements, but it does so in a very different way compared to Gaussian blur. And I honestly really love it. The look does mimic more of a camera blur, and I like how you can adjust how strong the highlight strength is. I'm super excited to play around with this filter for other pieces. The second filter is Crystallize. This filter turns your art into a bunch of pixel-like shapes, and I feel like there are a lot of interesting things you could do with this filter. For example, maybe I was drawing a scene with some water and I wanted there to be a reflection. Well, I can create a copy of the art and place it into the water. I then apply Crystallize to make the art more abstract and use a blending tool to apply a rippled texture. I also feel like this effect would be nice for stained glass windows or jewels. Lastly for this section, I want to show you a feature that was introduced in version 3.2 that can make adding finishing touches super quick. It is quick filters and quick effects. A lot of times when I'm adding filters to my work, I need to go to each individual filter and adjust them to my liking. However, with quick filters, I can do the work of multiple filters with one tap. This is especially helpful if I'm not sure what kind of filters I want to add. This lets me test out a bunch of different looks super quickly. The adjust section is also super convenient. These features are usually split between multiple filters, but now I can adjust them all in one spot. And I can basically say all the same things about quick effects. This lets me quickly and easily try out different effects all in one spot instead of needing to go through each individual effect. In theory, it's a very simple feature, but it makes things way more convenient. Another feature that is super simple but also very convenient is the improvement made to color settings. Usually if I want to change the color of my canvas, I select my color and then have to close the window to see how the color looks on my canvas. I can't see the change until I close the window, so I sometimes have to reopen the window to slightly adjust the color to my liking. However, now the color can be previewed without me needing to close the window. And I know this is a super small thing, but it's so nice. Oh, and this also applies to other areas, like when changing the colors of the text from the tool property palette. In this next section, we are going to talk about a version 4.0 feature that I feel can be pretty powerful, and it is Puppet Warp. So we are going to go to Edit, Transform, and then Puppet Warp. We can see a mesh appear over our character. Also, this is my character, Alfred. <laughs> If you would like, you can change the mesh density. I'm assuming the higher the mesh, the smoother the transformation, but we will set the mesh to standard for now. A setting that is very important to know about is click pin. Select pin lets you create and select pins, while delete pin does as the name suggests, it deletes the pins. Now you're probably thinking, what do pins do? Well, the way I think of it is pins are kind of like placing joints. You can also think of them as pinning the art into place. So let's say I want to place some pins that allow me to warp the arms and neck. Well, if I only place pins at these points and try to move the arm, the body moves in a way that I don't really want it to. This is happening because I need to place more pins to keep the body in place. So I place one on the waist and one at the top of each leg. Now I can make the arm move up. However, the rest of the body is responding to this and I don't really mind it, but to help it stay more in place, I place more pins. Now the movement of the right arm is more isolated. Something to keep in mind is that the pins do hold things in place. So let's say I want to make the arm bend at the elbow. It is currently bending in a snake-like fashion because I have a pin placed on the wrist. If I want the arm to bend as intended, I need to remove the pin on the wrist. I hope I'm not making this sound too complicated. It can be a bit confusing at first. But once you play around with the features for a few minutes, things make sense. Oh, and you can also transform things by dragging around the pins. 
So with the power of Puppet Warp, we can take a basic pose like this and transform it into something totally different. It looks like he's dancing. <laughs> I feel like there are so many possibilities and ways you can use this feature, like if I wanted to adjust this art of my character Doris to make her head tilt, I can now do so super easily, whereas before this would have been way more complicated to achieve with normal transformation methods. So I'm really excited about this feature and the possibilities it brings. This section is going to focus on features relating to 3D models, and I know I'm saying I'm excited about a lot of the features, but I am honestly so, so excited about this one. <laughs> If you watch my videos, you know that I've been playing around with making 3D models for my future story project. I want to use 3D models to help with the backgrounds and buildings. This is a model that I used for this piece. When I use 3D models for my webcomic, I simply use the Extract Line feature. This has been available in Clip Studio Paint EX for some time now. It gives me a clean and easy to use outline, so all I need to do is add the colors. However, for this piece, I had to draw over the model by hand because I wanted the line work to feel more rough and natural. I don't want that super clean look. However, the convert lines and tones settings and functionality were improved in version 3.1, and it will allow me to get the look I want without having to draw over the model by hand. To do this, I go to Layer, and then Convert to Lines and Tones. When this first window pops up, the art looks a lot like it did earlier. The lines are very clean. However, thanks to the 3.1 update, we can click the vector layer option and check the box next to brush type. This will allow us to change the line work to look like it was done with different brushes. This allows me to get that more hand-drawn look that I want in just a few seconds. And to boost the hand-drawn look even further, we can play around with the depth settings. Now to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just played around with the setting until it did what I wanted. My goal was to have the lines that are closer to us be thicker and the lines that are further away from us be thinner. I am honestly so pumped about this feature and its ability to make 3D models blend in with my work. It makes me want to make even more custom models to use for my projects. If you plan to make a comic of some sort, this feature is such a time saver. The next feature that was added in version 3.1 will be super helpful when it comes to making lighting references. So usually in Clip Studio Paint, if you have two models next to each other like this, you will notice that the shadow from the character is not casting onto the object. However, if I have a character selected and click this wrench, I can go to Light Source and change shadows from cast on ground only to cast on ground and models. Now the character is casting a shadow onto the block. It also responds and changes to how I move the character. Like I said, I feel like this will be so helpful for creating light references for my art pieces. Like sometimes I'm working on a piece and I want to know how the shadows will display, but I can't find any good references and I'm having a hard time figuring it out on my own. Well, now I can set up models to be a reference. Like if I wanted to draw a picture that has a character's shadow cast onto stairs, I can now easily make a reference instead of needing to find one that fits the exact look that I'm wanting. This will be such a helpful tool. For this last feature, I feel like it'll be super helpful for character references. This new feature is the ability to draw on 3D primitive and 3D drawing figures. At first I thought it was a setting I would have to turn on, but nope, you can just start drawing and it's really easy. So if you have a character with an eye patch, you can just draw an eye patch on the model and now you have an idea of how the eye patch will look from different views. You can also draw a face onto the model so that's easier to get an idea of your character's features. Right now I'm drawing a simple version of Chip's face onto the model and I'm really glad that I can still use the symmetrical ruler for this because it's very helpful. Something else I can do is draw certain clothing details onto the model to help me out later. Like Chip's uniform has the royal crest on it and I know this is going to be a bit of a pain to draw in different views. However, I can draw the crest onto the model and now I always have a reference for it in the same view that Chip is in and it's so cool. It would also be super handy if you have a character of tattoos. You can now have a super helpful reference of the tattoo from all angles. I think it's easy to say I'm super excited about these features and I didn't even cover all of them. Let me know which features you are most excited about in the comments. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of Clip Studio Paint and I highly recommend it. It's available on so many platforms and devices. Like if I wanted to, I could use it on my PC, iPad, and Google Pixel. Plus, they even offer a free trial, so you can try it out at no risk to you. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Thank you so much for taking the time to look at these new features with me, and before we end, I want to thank my super amazing YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. That's all for now, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!